Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for our preview show ahead of the England against Germany game. The old enemy. Well, not the old, old enemy. That's Scotland, but easy, we've already easy. taken care of them, oh, kind of. Do you mind? I thought we were friends here. I thought oh. we were friends. No, listen, listen, I know you've got a foot in both camps, you. You've got a foot in both camps, so... Um, yeah. Duke's, um, Duke's got his camera off today because he's um, he, he's powdering his nose. So yeah, you no, just have to bear with his wrong, wrong camera. But he's not missing much. That's probably the wrong what? wrong phrase. It's probably the wrong phrase to use in in in, in the nowadays. I couldn't care less. <laughs> I could. I couldn't care less. Politically correct? <laughs> no, nah, not really. We don't. We don't do that nonsense here. <laughs> so, how are you, boys? You all good? Yeah, mate. I'm. Oh, I'm so gutted that my TV's on that angle because I can't see what's going on in this Croatia Spain game. I'm not saying it's more important than that. It's, it's surreal. Yeah. I know. I, it's been I, a I, been I, a good I, game. I, I, I mean, we've. I'm sorry, due to what? I've got ITV hat up on the uh, up on the laptop. I'm watching him and listening to you. It's all good. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> especially after that, especially after that equaliser, that was that was Oops, coming on. Sounds just gone. But you can see it coming. Hold on. Oh, Daisy's got anything. Where's he gone? Oh. You're leaving us now. See it coming. So it's just me, myself, and I. And me. I'm still here. Oh yeah. I'm still here. Like, what have you got Sorry, my sounds eyes? just my sounds just playing around. Oh, bear with can me. Can you hear us? <laughs> Nothing like a live stream. Technology's rubbish. <laughs> and we're live. Sorry about that, chaps. So what? Yeah, listen, it all goes on here, so you know, whatever. <laughs> so um, yeah, so the, the Croatia Spain game's been an interesting one. Uh, three all at the minute. We're what six minutes into the uh, first half of extra time. It's been it's been an interesting game, in fairness. Did you see the first goal? Yeah. Yeah, I did, yeah. Poor bastard. <laughs> yeah, I do feel sorry for him. Oh, oh what a save! <laughs> what a save! Frankly, I'll tell you what, Frank's keeper's just received redeemed himself there, Casey, from that. I know I'm probably about a minute behind you, but the Spanish keeper just redeemed himself for that first goal. That was outstanding. <laughs> I'll tell you what, your dog's on one, mate, isn't it? <laughs> It's gone a bit funny. I might have to. Um, I might have to do a little bit of wizardry. You two just carry on much stuff. I'll just get the um, the screen up. I've I've done the um, my predicted lineups. This is this is what I'm. Uh, listen, I don't know whether it's what Southgate's going to go with ultimately. I mean, I'm hoping against hope that he includes Jack Grealish. I I don't. I have a sneaking suspicion he won't. Uh, I think the goalkeeper picks himself. I think obviously Jordan Pickford between the sticks is is pretty pretty straightforward choice. John Stones is a pretty straightforward choice. I think yeah. Luke Shaw's a, a, a fairly nailed on for the for the left back role. I just don't see that given the fact that Chilwell has missed the time that he has um, because of obviously the COVID situation. I don't really see that he's going to come in at left back. Maguire. I, I think he's going to go with. I think he's going to get in ahead of Mings. The interesting one will probably be at right back, whether he keeps Kyle Walker. I, I think Kyle Walker had a good game last time out, just for the record. But he, he might go Trippier. He might go James. Who knows what Gareth Southgate's thinking? He might even go three at the back. He might completely prove yeah. us all wrong. Um, obviously, Declan Rice, I'm I'm hoping that him getting substituted at half time. For Jordan Henderson isn't maybe sort of like maybe more sinister than it actually looks. Um, you know, a lot of people have sort of like been saying about, you know, well, Declan Rice isn't looking like the player that he's looked like for West Ham. But I I, I fundamentally think, boys, and I don't know about you, I'll get your opinions on it, that, that he's probably playing that role because that's the role he's been told to play. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, Casey, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't think he plays tomorrow. I really can't see him playing. Uh, I, I don't think I, so. I think Henderson was going to start. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. In Rice's place, or yeah. see, I, I, I'm wondering if he might actually go a three-man midfield of Rice, Phillips, and Henderson. 
<laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, I've got I've got my I've got my desired uh, my desired lineup game here. If I'm honest, it was nothing like what you play out there. I mean, we had a, a swift discussion on it the other night. But if 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 you if you want to put me in um if you want to put me in these shoes, my team looks nothing like that. If I'm honest with you, my team looks looks nothing like that. You back four and you don't keep them yet. I'll give you that. And your midfield three, I think you've got two right. Um, for me, anyway, what I'd like to do is I would, I, I'd like to see Rice play the holding role on his own. Um, I think he struggles when it's anyone else but Suchek, if I'm honest with you, and to have such an understanding at West Ham that um, he, he struggles when it's anyone else. We saw it when he, when he was partnered with Noble and, and four nails to a degree at the end of the season, Lanzini, you know, and, and it wasn't it wasn't the same deck with Morris we have, and I think that's why you're seeing some struggles from him um, in, in these games. Now, I wouldn't play for this. I wouldn't play for this. I would um, I play 4-1, 1-4. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can understand that. You say what, sorry? 4-1-1-4. Yeah, I agree. I'm just waiting for, I'm waiting for the, uh, the absolute um, unbelievable comments that are going to come. But for me, 4-1-1-4, the back four pretty much as is. Don't get me wrong, I think I'd like to see uh, Rich Jones back in there. I don't think he played too badly. Um, yeah, I play Declan Rice in front of the back four. I play Jack Grealish in front of um, in front of Declan Rice. I then play. <laughs> here we go, Sancho and Saka on your wings, regardless of whatever foot they use. Sancho and Saka wide. I know partner Harry came with Calvert Lewin because I'm, if I'm honest, um, I'm, I'm sick and tired of listening to. Um, a lot of a lot of bad mouthing of uh, Harry Kane. Now, I don't think Harry Kane has been particularly fantastic. In fact, in fact, I'd go as far as say he's been very poor. Um, but that comes down to the, uh, the the support he's received. The the you know he's not been he's, no one's delivered to Harry Kane, and Harry Kane's having to drop deeper and deeper to try and involve himself in the game. Now, if you partner him up front with Calvert Lewin. And you play two wide players in Sancho and Saka. He's got all the support he needs. Now, if he fails miserably against Germany and he's got the support, then we can start having a conversation. I think he looks tired. I think he's basically carried Tottenham for the last 14 months, which basically has been a season and a half in 14 months. You know, you, you look at the end of not last season, but the season before, when it was crammed into. Uh, half a season was crammed into two and a half months, if I remember rightly. Then we quickly kick-started last campaign, um, and Harry Kane pretty much, you know, played as that lone striker, if you will, um, for Spurs. And then he's come out of the season straight into a Euro without necessarily having a break. The poor bastard's on his knees. Like, he is knackered. And he's not getting, you know, there's no support out there from him. He's got no one, ah, oh, damn it. He's got no one um, getting up there alongside of his opponent. So for me, yeah. 4 1 1 4. But what I do is in possession, your two wide players push on and go support your two strikers. Out of possession, those two drop back in between Declan Rice and Jack Grealish and offer you, um, you know, some sort of um, blockade, if you will. In the middle. When we're in possession, we play it wide, you know, ball into Harry Kane's feet, ball into Jack Grealish's feet, um, uh, into Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish then feeds off of, you know, Harry Kane or, or Dominic Calvert Lewin, gets the ball wide to, you know, Saka or Sancho. That ball then comes straight into the box, and, you know, you've got two strikers. Or a wide player getting into the box, you've got Jack Grealish ready to recycle anything that comes out to the edge of the box and to ping it away. So um, that's how I go. Listen, I'm bored of the bullshit football that we played. Sorry, Jake, I know you're watching. Um, I'm bored. I'm bored of that football. I'm bored of what I saw against um, Scotland. You know, we, we played with two defensive midfielders when um, when we had ten men behind the ball in Scotland. 
we had no one to, you know, unlock their defence, to, you know, use a lock, pick and pin a pass, which then show um, Greenish, uh, Saka, you know, Saka against uh, Czech, proof it. So, I'd like to see a place of attacking football, because I think, going forward, we... we do you think favorite. he's going to do it, though, dude? No, because he's... Um, He's a, he's a bottom half of the Premier League table manager at best, uh, if, you, if you want my opinion. He certainly wouldn't manage anything, anything inside the top 10 in the Premier League um, to, to any kind of um, you know, decent kind of form or season. Um, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying David Boyce with a, you know, a sixth place finish for West Ham would do any better than Southgate at international level. Um, but if I'm honest with you, if Southgate's our best option, and if we lose tomorrow, he's got to walk. He has to walk. If we don't win tomorrow, he's got to walk away from the job because he ain't good enough to take us any further. Um, three years ago, I thought it might have been different in the World Cup. They, um, they and, won't and get rid of him 12, 12, 12, 15 months out from a World Cup, though, Duke. They, they won't get no, rid of him like this, this close they to a World Cup. If it was two, if it was two, if it was two years to a, the next tournament, then they might. But He should walk because he's not capable. Like I say, he, he's not even, top, he's not he even a top 10, top 12 manager. I personally think Scott Parker would do a better yeah. job, and he's just left full of. I think Scott Ooh. Parker would do a better job for England than Gareth Southgate. Yeah. If you want my opinion. Thing is, he hasn't exactly set the world alight. I mean, he's he, all right. The first relegation under Fulham wasn't his. You know, wasn't wasn't one that he, I think, takes ownership of. Second one certainly is. I'm afraid. Mm. Um, no, see, I, I see you can say that, Gacy, but um, I know I know they spent some money, um, you know, in, in the pre-season. Um, I think what you've got to look at is they kind of helped the rest of Um And it's not what it used to be with the Premier League anymore, um, honestly. You know, players coming up, uh, sorry, teams coming up at the Championship um, would normally buy, um, you know, ageing, Aging, you know, players coming out of the Premiership in relegated clubs or whatever. Unfortunately for Fulham, that, that's all changed now. So what you're looking at is um, you're looking at clubs that struggle to bring in players when you come out of the league. They did really well with um, Ariola. I've got a stay cut of loan deals, but I, 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 the, the blame for their relegation again, I wouldn't put a Parker who can only pick what he's got and he can only play. Uh, a formation and a system with what he's got, and unfortunately, he has to, he has to take um, some responsibility. He's been manager for two years. I don't, I just, he's been manager for two years, though, Duke. If he's only five, yeah. Like, yeah, no, I, listen, I agree with that. If you're only getting five million pounds in transfer budget and you've got to do the rest of it on loans and freebies, then you ain't going to be able to do a great deal with that day. So you're not going to bring in any kind of Premier League worthy type players. You can bring in, you do that, you are not being funny. Look mm. at Pellegrini. Pellegrini spent eight million million quick and didn't bring in any Premier League quality players. So it's, it's difficult because, you know, you, I, I personally, personally, I think Parker's done the right thing. I don't think he's going to be out of work for long. I don't think he was supported by um, by the owners at Fulham. I think they were, more, they were more too worried about filling in off the Thames and, um, and building that new stand up off the, off the back of the Thames. And, um, you know, it's... I, I think he walks away, he gets another job somewhere else and I actually think he'll see what kind of manager he is because I think given... Given the right players to play the formation he wants, I, I, like Moyes, you, we, we, we bang on about players in the right positions and the right formations and players that fit your um, what what you're looking for. That's what you've got. What uh, what uh, what Moyes has done, and you know we had a sixth place finish. Um, I, I saw Andy put something in our chat earlier about. Um, uh, uh, Furpo, um, you know, maybe we've missed the boat there, which is quite frustrating because um, Moyes is playing. Moyes, Moyes is playing. Um, is he playing a, a visor or something, or or chatty chatty over on um, over over in Europe for this uh, for this tournament? He's playing some sort of advisor role in some capacity. So we seem to be missing the boat on some of our transfer targets, and, and I'm getting a bit. Uh, yeah, it off if I'm honest with you. But we're not here about that. We're about this. So let's go. Sorry. My fault. Mosey, 
Mosey, your thoughts on that 11 that I've cobbled together? I mean, do you think that's that's going to be largely what goes out tomorrow or what changes do you see? Uh, I see us parking the bus, mate. I honestly can see us going into do you the think back he's five. In do you think that's... Do you think yeah. Henderson's coming in as well? Uh, yeah. Who's, uh, who's, the, who's dropping out? No, 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 no. I, I can see... Um, Walker moving into the right centre back role. I can see Reese James going into right, okay. right, right, right wing back, and I'll see Henderson and yeah. Phillips. Henderson and Phillips in the middle, and then I'll see that. Uh, uh, and I reckon it will be Grealish, Sterling, and Kane. You think I Grealish think will start? Yeah. It will go five the back, you reckon? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. He's going to. He's going to be matching the Germans, though, isn't he? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So you, you, you basically he's telling Reese James only come back when defend because obviously Carl Walker can cover him. Uh, like at the back, Carl Walker doesn't move, does he? When he put when he plays centre back for England or even Man City. So yeah, and I was uh, I think I think Rice will be dropped. Uh, I honestly think so. I think he's the the obsession of what he's got with the top six. I've I've never for, we've said it, Gatesy. What was it? Not the Scotland game. Was it after the Czech Republic, or what game was it when we when we done a show? And I said as soon as soon as he as soon as that Lloydy when he first said, I only pick players on form. And since he's gone against that, I've lost all respect for him, and I have no trust in him. I have absolutely no trust in this man. Well, he's, a, he's just well, a he, top six. He went at the moment. He went against that mantra the moment he picked the squad and put Jordan Henderson in that hasn't played football. For the best part of three months, and Harry and Harry Maguire, who'd been out four six weeks injured, um, and obviously a player like Jesse Lingard, um, and obviously you know I'm obviously saying it as a West Ham fan, and he played for West Ham for six months of last season and did very well. So maybe I'm a little bit biased, but he left him behind. Uh, so the the notion that he picks players on form, not on reputation when you've got that evidence in front of you, is complete nonsense in my view. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, I've just, so, like, like I said, mate, I've lost complete um, faith in him. And do you know what I just don't like? It's like, he's a bit arrogant. The way he comes across in the media, it's like, yes, like you'll probably see ITV later, or unless they've done it already, because I didn't watch the build-up. Oh, we're going to go live to, uh, to blah, 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 and talk to Gareth Southgate. And he's just going to be yes, yes, yes. Any anything what Gary Neville or anyone like that will say to him, it'll be yes, man. That's all he is. Is a yes, man. And as far as I'm concerned, he, he he's not going to he's not going to bring it home. <laughs> well, let let's see what happens tomorrow. I mean, put it this way: if if we turn up against Germany tomorrow and get a get a result that gets us through, and to be honest with you, even if it is on penalties. You know the the boost that would give in in morale, in confidence. Hopefully, might just spark something into life. I mean, I don't know. Sort of like you're obviously a bit younger than than Duke and I, Milesy, but Euro '96. I remember the the match we had in the quarterfinals against Spain, and we abs we we got pummeled. We got absolutely pummeled that match, but we managed to get yeah. through on a penalty shootout, and we found ourselves in a semi final, and we managed to find another gear, whether it was because of the opposition, whether we just sort of like got a little bit of confidence because of a penalty shootout win, which up to that point, I don't think we'd ever had in an international tournament or in an international match, in fact, let alone a tournament. And we'd obviously mm. got through the penalty shootout. We're facing Germany. I'm just, I'm just wondering if maybe if the same thing happens tomorrow where we sort of get past Germany by hook or by crook, and we then find ourselves in a semi-final, or sorry, quarter-final against, um, is it Sweden and Ukraine, isn't it, that we, we, we'd be up against, that maybe that could be the catalyst for us to go on to bigger and better things. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. As I say, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to be optimistic. I know what you're saying. I Am I am I overly sort of like, um, a, a sort of like confident in Gareth Southgate? No, to be honest, I've not been confident in him since the moment he walked through the door. I mean, I looked at him and went, what's he ever done? He he took Middlesbrough and got them relegated from the Premier League to the Championship. He didn't then get them back up. And he's been, he was an under-21 manager for a spell and I don't think he really yeah, did. And then technical director or whatever so, it was, wasn't it? The technical director yeah, or something. Yeah, very much a, 
he's a company man, company man. So, but listen, uh, we're in the last 16. And again, if we got through against the Germans and whichever fashion it came, even if it was a, a sudden death penalty shootout, if we then found ourselves in a quarterfinal game against either Ukraine or Sweden, who knows? You know, funny things can happen in tournaments. You know, sometimes it's momentum, it's confidence. I think if we can see first, we're out. You don't think we we'll can get, come back? No. We need to score first if we've got any chance of going through, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Don't want to sound too negative. Oh, well, I mean, Mind you, that, Luke says that they have bags of experience. I don't think that this particular... I mean, if you look at the, the starting 11 that Germany put out yesterday... I don't think they've got sort of like that many more caps compared to us. That's in, ridiculous. In term, that you know, team, um, for the national team. But look, but this is what I put together for the Germany team. Now, whatever, you know, whether that is the team, as I say, that's partly the team that I, that I think England are going to put out. And in part, it's me keeping my fingers crossed that Grealish is going to play as a, as a sort of like the playmaker alongside yeah. Bryce and Phillips in a midfield three, and then Foden and Sterling either side of Harry Kane. As I say, it's part of it's wishful thinking on my part, perhaps. Um, this, however, I don't think is wishful thinking. I think this is the team that that, uh, that Yogi Love is putting out against us tomorrow. So over to you, boys. Do your thoughts. No, okay, Milesy. Uh. Mate, oh, that's frightening, that team. That is absolutely frightening. It's ridiculous. The, Tony Tony Kroos is a world-class player. Well, well, world-class. Mm -hmm. Gundogan, what a season he's had. Getting in and out of the box. Kimmich, that, that's not even his natural position. He's probably the best speedy no. in the world. And he's not even playing there. And, he, and he's world-class as well. He, he, he's that. But the one what does me is Havertz and Gnabry. They're the ones who frighten me the most. Yeah. Um, wasn't Serge you, Gnabry um, labelled by Tony Poulis that he wasn't good enough for yeah. Stoke City? Yeah. I'm fairly um, sure he said that. Yeah. So Gnabry obviously scored four goals. He loves playing in London. He mentioned that in his press conference yesterday, the four he got against Tottenham. I know they're a small club. <laughs> I'm not joking. I won't go political. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah. and now, if you were going political, you'd be talking about Matt Hancock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wonder whether he, oh, yeah. Uh, I've seen some more videos again today. That made me laugh, but that's for another day. Oh, there's um, loads out there, mate. Have you seen the one with, sorry, I might as well, seen the one with the old Bill outside Downing Street, Parliament? No, Hancock, no I haven't seen Hancock, that. Is Hancock coming out to play and the policeman said something? I can't remember exactly what he said, but everyone was cracking up. <laughs> he went, he's been tied up or something. Fair enough. Been tied up with other oh, policemen. Yeah. Sorry, Rob, I dropped my headset. Um, just quickly, uh, Andy, on yours, I had a, um, had a meeting with a cleaning company that deal with our contract for the pub today, and he told me that he'd been on the phone to the Houses of Parliament telling them that he's, uh, he's the area manager for a cleaning company and he understands that there's an office in the Houses of Parliament that needs a deep clean do they need someone to come in and do it? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help but sit my hat to the fella and think that's genius. He's literally jumped in on it. He literally, we phoned them asking him if they needed the office seat clean because he understands there's been a bit of an issue in it. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be opening any doors or drawers in that office, would you? <laughs> no. Yeah. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. So, yeah. um, Palsy, so Gnabry. Yeah, what a player he is. What a player he's, he's, and You can say that the German league's not competitive, but he's turned up in the Champions League for him. Um, got where's pace. their weakness? Where's, where's the weakness in that 11, Malsy? Give me a little bit of hope. Where's their weakness? Is it down, Probably... down the, the, the sort of like the, the German right hand side in that there is. And I'm not, as you say, he's a world-class CDM, but he's not a world-class right wing back, yeah. Joshua Kimmich. Is that the area that we need to be trying to exploit, do you think? Uh, no, I think the weakness is Hummels. 
out of the three. Okay. So, so the only way we... Three back line, yeah. Yeah, uh, Rudiger's had a great... Well, I'll probably say the last 18 months or two years for Chelsea, probably been one of their best players. Uh, always in, he's having difficult partners, but he always gets picked. And under under the new manager, he's been amazing. And I think that confidence has gone into him. Um, I like the look at their left midfielder or left wing back, so to speak. Obviously, it's been a month of goals as well. Great, great delivery of the ball. And Ginter's um, a great centre-half as well pretty old school and they've, they've got backups of defenders the one player who surprised me who's not playing for them is Sule Sule is miles better than Hummels but I'm guessing it's for experience that's the reason yeah. what, why why he's not playing but yeah the only weakness I can see mate is like you said is not because Kimmich is not a good player but but do I see Luke Shaw bombing on past Kimmich no it, it's, it's going to be Sterling against I, Ginter I, I think Luke Shaw has the capability to go bombing on past Kimmich, but the thing is, will he be under orders to maybe have the handbrake on? That's my yeah. concern. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, Duke. Duke, yeah, your, Duke, your thoughts on that 11? Uh, again, see, if I'm honest with you, right, I, I can sit in there and I could reel off to you Near enough, near enough, every member of the starting 11 or even some of the squad players from the Germany 1990 World Cup team, right? They were, in my opinion, amazing. I look at this team, and if you'd said to me at the start of this, before the Euros and before the teams were named, pick me a Germany squad to go, wouldn't have had a fucking screw me, mate. I would have known, right? Honestly, um... Just because there's, there's a couple of names there that stand out for me in in regards to um, who they are, you know, Max Hummels is a is a player. You know, I, I know him outside of anyone that's played in this country. You know, Neuer, mm-hmm. Kimmich, yes, right. Rudiger, I only know the name because he plays in the Premier League. Ginter wouldn't have had a scooby if he had asked me. Tony Cruz, all right, yeah, he's another one out because he, you know, he plays for uh, Madrid. Um, Gundogan plays for City. You know, Guzan wouldn't have had a clue. Havertz, Chelsea, Nabry, because he played in this country. And Thomas Muller, uh, amazing, outstanding player. He would have been the only one. Him and Neuer really would have been the only two that I could have given you. Um, honestly, I watched them against Hungary and they looked susceptible to a team playing on the front foot. They look susceptible. Now, I've seen all the comments and, and I've seen, um, you know, uh, Warriors said there, Germany are like a well all the clock. They, you know, they just keep ticking. Stop making them tick. Stop giving them the chance to tick. Get into them and play on the front foot. Now, I've said, it, I've, I've said it in near enough every West Ham review that we did towards the end of the season, mate. We need to go out and we need to play on the front foot. We need to play attacking football. It doesn't change just because... Well, you know, British England now. This Germany side, um, I watched against Portugal. The only time that I looked at them and went, oh, they look good. France, they looked absolutely diabolical, if I'm honest with you. Whether well, that was because France looked so good, but then not so much against Portugal. You, you see where I'm coming from? Not, not so much against Hungary. Um, whether or not they were France were playing a bit of chess with regards to... How they're going to get out of the group? Portugal playing a bit of chess on how they're going to get out of the group. Germany playing a bit of chess on how they're going to get out of the group. But if if I had to hand pick at the start of this tournament, if we were going to play anyone out of that group, I'd have picked Germany. Germany would have been my first choice. I wouldn't have wanted to play Portugal, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Jao Felix and Fernandez and a couple of the others. I, I just think. Mm-hmm. Um, at the start of the tournament. And France, I, I, I really don't want to see Kylian Mbappe running at a backwards running Harry Maguire. You go fuck yourself for that one because that scares the living shit out of me. So, um, you know, if, if you give me the option of hand pick, Germany would have been the one. Um, Nabry, very good player, you know, as, as uh, Andy said, he scored four um, against a, a, a small team in North London um, and enjoyed it. Um, was one that said he wasn't good enough, like he said, by Tony Pulis. Um, but I've been a different player now. Um, 
Thomas Muller, I've got all the time in the world for I love the fella. I think he's absolutely outstanding professional. Um, Kimmich doesn't play there, like uh, Marcy said. Kimmich, Kimmich don't play that position. Kimmich is a CDN. Kimmich is a right. Can you tell me that um, David Moyes or, um, or Southgate would say to Declan Rice, I want you to go play right wing back? Right? Rice would do it. Would he be any good? No. Right? So Kimmich don't play that position. No chance. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether they, they stick with that because I'll be honest with you um, I think England and their exuberant attacking you know, intent that we can have um, even if they stick with Sterling even if they go with Mount Sancho Saka um, you know, Harry Kane, Calvin Lewin uh, Grealish, you know, my God, there's some, there's some attacking intent there, Gatesy. And I look at Gundogan playing now, he, he's more of an attacking player, surely. He, he doesn't necessarily play as a holding player in midfield. If you're going to do anything, you swap him and Kimmich around and you tell Kimmich to hold. Um, I think that back line there is very, very susceptible to the pace that we have in our squad. I really do think that back line is susceptible. So I'm not I'm, I'm not as um, downbeat as, as some others that I've spoken to. And obviously, Andy, I know you said there that you think that, you know, this Germany side will more than likely, you know, turn us over. I, I, I really don't see it. I, I see West Ham coming over. West Ham. <laughs> I see England coming away with a, with a 2-1 win. I see, uh, I see Harry Kane getting off the mark. Um, I'd like to think that Southgate will um, Southgate will play something a little bit more attacking. Uh, yeah, Luke, you're right, we do. And that's where, um, I think, in Miles's opinion, uh, that Henderson comes in, I think it's a big fucking mistake. Um, Declan Rice is proven to be able to hold on to the ball and carry the ball forward um, better, than some, better than any other player, in my opinion, in the Premier League this season. Um, other than possibly in other can say. Um, so I, I'd ask Declan Rice to do the job. Um, I'd see him in there. Go do, do what you do at West Ham. Break up play, be in the way, get ready to ping a 45 yard pass with the wrong foot out wide. You know, I, I, I think we've got the ability to beat him, mate, and I think we've got the ability to beat him in normal time. Yeah, see, the only reason why I'm down, but sorry, Gates, the only reason why I'm down beat Duke no, is no, not because no. we don't we do, we don't have the players. I just think Southgate's going to be too negative tomorrow. That's the only. I'm not saying we don't have the players, and like like that, like yeah. I said, everyone's entitled to that. That that's the only reason. I think no, we've got no, these players. Yeah. If we, if, and that's down to the players on the pitch, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, sorry, Gates. As you've added, as we both said in in West Ham preview shows. Um, I'd like to think that the players on the pitch, if they see something ain't working out there, to go, no, fuck it, if it ain't working, let's do something else on the pitch. Because at the end of the day, um, that's why you put your captain on the pitch. You're, the captain is is you on the pitch. So, you, you, you know, if, if I'm Harry Kane tomorrow and I can see that what we're trying to do with regards to you know, uh, a, a tactical setup isn't working. I'm getting over the touchline as soon as I can, and I'm saying to more, uh, Moyes, look, down the south gate, um, this ain't working, son. We've got to do something else. You know, we're 10, 15 minutes in, and we're banging our head against a, a German wall, then something's got to change. And I'd like to think that, you know, the captain on the pitch, be it West Ham, Man U, you know, City, Liverpool, England, the captain on the pitch and turn around and go, Catherine, this ain't working. We've got to do something else. Or even have the bollocks to turn around and go, it ain't working. I'm changing it. I deal with what the manager says at half time if I have to. Because at the end of the day, the gaffer ain't the one out there, you know, kicking the ball around and, and doing what he does. So you're right. I, 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 yeah, you know, I get where you're coming from with, with Southgate and being a negative Nelly. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me if that's exactly how he's going to be. Um, but I'd also like to think that Kane's got a set of nuts on him to turn around and go, Gaffer ain't working. We need to make a change. Well, there was, um, and I'm, this isn't football as such, but um, there was a captain that I know for absolute certain that when things weren't working on the pitch would change it around. Uh, his name was Martin Johnson. 
and he captained England to a World Cup. So, you know, and he openly said if things weren't working, he would actually turn around to the, to the lads on the pitch, the other 14 players, and go, right, forget what Clive Woodward said in the changing rooms. It clearly isn't working. This is what we're doing. The captain is the manager, as far as I'm concerned. Once, once they cross the white line, if the captain yeah. can see patently that the tactics that the manager has laid out and the players are trying to implement fundamentally is not working for whatever reason, whether it's just that, the, you know, it's the execution, whether it's the conditions, whether it's the other players have just tactically more, you know, switched on to what they're trying to do, then it's down to the captain to go, right, lads, it ain't working. Plan B, simple as that. Yeah. And as I say, I, I remember Martin Johnson turning around in an interview and saying that there were quite a few occasions that he would turn around to the players and, and very quickly turn around and go, forget what he's just said. We're doing it this way. And this is a captain that won a World Cup. So, do you, But do you, you think, know, do you think Harry Kane's got the bollocks Keep your fingers it, crossed that he... No, no, I don't. No, I don't. Well, I don't know whether it's the bollocks, but I... I, I it may well be that his mind's not fully on the job. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I agree. I agree with that statement. Yeah, rugby players are brighter than footballers. Um, in, in all truth, I'm probably comparing apples to oranges, uh, and especially comparing Martin Johnson to Harry Kane. It's probably a really bad comparison. But you know the point I'm trying to make yeah. in that you know a captain fundamentally is the leader on the pitch. Once the players have crossed the white line. Um, the manager can't help them, really. They can't, especially when they're in a, you know, a stadium, especially when there's a crowd there. Because let's have it right, the player, the, the managers on the, on the touchlines barking out instructions, they can't bloody hear you. Not with the crowd all sort of like roaring and singing and booing and clapping and all the rest of it. They're not going to hear the manager, but the captain. No, but no disrespect, though. If you're 30 yards away, are you really going to understand what Harry Kane's saying? Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's <laughs> true enough. Like yeah, but... yeah. <laughs> don't move, don't cheat. I've already done yeah. that in my personal life as well. Yeah, sorry, yeah. allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, don't <laughs> sue us. <laughs> move. Could you move as as they say in in the Downing Street press briefings, Miles? Next slide, please. Next slide, please, officer. Because you've because you've got control tonight. There you go. I've done a little, a couple of little snippets of info, of um, facts and figures and whatever. So the first one is that this is the third meeting between England and Germany at the European Championships. So Germany won six five on penalties following a one all draw in ninety six semi final, which I remember very well. That was that was absolutely horrible. Um, You'd have still been a nipper. You'd have still had sort of like rusks in in your um in your hand, no, wouldn't was, you, Miles? You you won't no, remember was, that too that well, will you? No, I was nine. Uh, oh, ninety six. Sorry, no, I was five. So I probably had like watsits and quavers and stuff stuff around my face, probably. Yeah. Yeah, Duke and I will probably remember that, won't you, Duke? Uh, yeah. I mean. It, it, well, uh, you've got a foot in both camps, as we've said. So you, you, you were on to a winner either way. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, it, it's hard because um, as much as I joke and as much as I, I, I do tend to take the piss, to be honest with you, I've already threatened to be walking around in a Germany shirt tomorrow downstairs in the pub if, uh, <laughs> if, if the worst comes to the worst. But, um, yeah, it, you know, England, England's one of our football up. So as much as the tactics and have a laugh and a joke, I want to see England do well. And if it means being Germany, of course it means being Germany. I only pretty much do the wind up like I do because I know it really gets people's goats because it's England, Germany, you know. So, um, but I, I remember that that '96 game. That '96 was was horrible. Um, or, well, I remember '90. Um, '90, '90, I was well. No, I weren't. Yeah, I was 11, 12 years old. And I remember that. I remember uh, the David Platt winner against Belgium. Um, and then I remember the Gary Lineker goal um, against Germany. I remember, you know, the Gaza, the Gaza tackle, the tears, the penalties. And the, On the, his the thigh, bang. Yeah. 
you know, it was great finish, absolutely fantastic finish. Right, for me, rivaled um, yeah. uh, rivaled the plaque finish against Belgium in that game, uh, in, in the in that tournament. Um, you know, then the heartbreak from that, and it's really, really is the first World Cup. Um, I, I do like I say, really remember, and that Germany team was was, was amazing. I mean, Lothar Matthias, uh, Klinsmann was in there, Karl Heinz Reed, Landgraf, Bremer. Um, yeah, Pierre Barsky, uh, Bono Ilgner, as I said to you earlier, I can, I can, I can uh, Guido Buchwald, one of the defenders, could rattle off a load of players from that Germany set. And that, that was a great, great sight. Um, mm. uh, it, was, it was the other strike, Rudy Voller. You know, there were some great players in there. And then we get to, you know, six years later, and, and the same thing, same thing fucking happened again, you know. The, the was it the Corning goal then? Like Oliver Kahn. It was Andreas Kirka. Oh, was it Kirka? He was there. He was it was the Andreas squad, Kirka. Was he was the one that saved the penalty. Kahn was in the squad, but he never played a minute. It was Andreas Kirka that played. He was scary, wasn't he? Again, as Oliver Kahn. Oh, as Christ, better. yeah. We had, the side. we had the better side in 96. Individually, we had the better side. Um, you know, Gaza, this guy did a thing... Yesterday, I think, of how close Gaza was to, you know, turning that ball into the back of the net, and it was probably four inches from making connection on that ball, probably less turning yeah. into the back of the net. You know, I still, I still watch that back, and I, I still think if he went out with a stretched leg rather than swinging his leg, um, I think he would have made connection to it. Um, and, and, and again, hard to take. I remember walking down uh, Plexi Four by Gacy. Um, and that was when just down the road from um, what was the Polo Bar or the Drayman at the time used to be a BMW yeah. showroom. And um, I remember walking past that going home and watching that place just get absolutely trashed. Um, windows smashed, bikes yeah. absolutely, you know, they paid hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of damage, must have been done there. Um, and, and as I put in my Facebook post uh, for my company, um, We've got to forget 96. We've got to forget 1990. And what we've got to remember and what we've got to channel is, you know, Bobby and Jeff and Martin of 66. We've got to channel the Michael Owen hat trick in Munich. Um, we've got to get revenge for. We've got to hold and give. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've got to get revenge for, for the Frank Lampard ghost goal, you know? So. Um, for me, we, uh, we'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll win. We'll win tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And and of course, the other game that it says is there, the third meeting. The other game was a, a one nil win in Charleroi, um, where Alan Shearer got the goal, and Oliver Kahn was in goal for that one. So yeah, you um, next slide, please. <laughs> so this will be the 13th meeting between England and Germany at Wembley Stadium. England have won four of the first five such games, losing one. It includes the 1966 World Cup final, but we are winless in our last seven against the Germans at the National Stadium. We have drawn two and lost five at Wembley. Gentlemen, that's not a particularly great statistic, is it? But it has yeah, to win the some point. Thinking. I think if I'm right in thinking, those last seven have come uh, since they've become Germany. Am I right in thinking since they've become a unified, um, you know, we beat West Germany in, in the uh, in the 66. We lost to West Germany in the 1990 World Cup. It was only after that they became unified. Um, so if I'm right in thinking... I'm fairly that, sure we did lose a cup... I think we have lost a couple to West Germany um, after after '66 and before the reunification in '90. But I, I, I don't yeah, know. I um, yeah, think the early ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, as I say, um, we're winless in our last seven at, at Wembley, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, next slide, reason. please. Um, so in all major tournaments, European Championships and World Cups, England and Germany have met seven times previously. Both sides have won two games each with three draws, but the Germans have progressed via a penalty shootout 
following two of those draws. Ah! The dreaded penalty shootout curse. Mm. We, 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 we owe them. Well, if, if it gets to penalties, chaps, we again, the law of averages says at some point we have to we have to come on the right side of it, don't we? Actually, and and we've got the monkey off the back now that we've won a couple of penalty shootouts of late in, in major tournaments. Yeah, we put that to bed against Colombia as far as I'm concerned. That, that, get that off of our back. Um, so. <sighs> the thing yeah, what worries me, yeah, the thing what worries me is obviously extra time. You don't know what changes is in the World Cup. You sort of had a rough idea. Who was going to take the penalties? I ain't got a clue who will take the penalties now. Do you see what I mean? That's my only concern. I know a penalty shootout is an individual yeah. person taking the ball, but well, we know one of them will on... be Kane. Yeah, I think I think Rice would be up uh, for it. Would take one Rice yeah, he'll take be one, one of the first five. Uh, I think Sterling would. I think uh, who else? I, th- I think Luke Shaw probably Bellingham, would, to be fair. I think Bellingham, if he's on the pitch, would have a set up for Hollis to take the penalty. I don't think anything faces that mm. guy. I think, he's, uh, honestly, for someone his age, he is outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Uh, probably John Stones for me. Or Pickford. Pickford can hit a book. Pickford's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 good shout. He did. Good, mm. good, good. Um, isn't there a goalie about seven foot? What Germany? Manuel Neuer. I Manuel think he's that tall, Luke. I think, I think he's about six and a half foot. I think what Luke's talking about is the, the width of his hand. He's seven foot. I think that's oh, right, yeah, no, that's fair enough. From, from, from little finger to thumb, I think the width of his hands seems to be about seven foot. Because honestly, like Miles, you said you met Phil Parks doing that and you shook his hand. Yeah. 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 Um, Manuel Neuer's hands are um, are bigger than Phil Parks's. So. Um, yeah, that, that's what you need to worry about. I ain't about how tall he is. He's fucking whipped with his hands. Yeah. Next slide, please. So, England's match with Germany will be their 300th international match at Wembley Stadium, with this their 77th match at the new site since it reopened in 2007. So, the three Alliance have won 187 times at the new Wembley, drawing 73 and losing 39 and we remain unbeaten in our last 14 euros or world cup finals matches at the home of football winning nine and drawing five again that's that's reasons to be positive isn't it chaps um yeah yes and no um it, it just boils down. Like, it, it doesn't matter where you play the game as long as the players turn up. If the players turn up tomorrow, but then we're, we're, we're all right. If they don't turn up, and as Luke said, Kane has to show up with his shooting boots and show his class. If he don't, then we're bugging. It doesn't matter whether we're playing at Wembley Stadium, uh, Riverside Stadium, whether we're playing at you know Dean Park or, or with Dean or Brighton's old ground. It doesn't matter where we play. Um, if the players don't show, it ain't going to make no difference. Um, so. They need, they, you know, they need to show up. I, I, I love the stats and the positivity going behind it, but these, these games, these games don't rely on um, whether you're, you know, whether you're at home, whether you're away. You look at all the other, the other countries that have had to play, um, you know, here, there, and everywhere during this tournament. You know, there's very few, very few teams that have actually managed to play all of their games in their home stadium so far. You know, so um, I've, I've, listen. Turn up tomorrow. Turn up tomorrow. We get the win. They, they don't get shot on. So you know, um, at the end of the day, it, it, it comes down to 90 minutes uh, and the players stepping foot between those uh, those those set of lines. You know, um, if they can turn up, they get the job done in 90 minutes. If they don't and they hold out for a draw, then you know we have a lottery of extra time and penalties. I don't need that. As much as that'd be great for my pub. <laughs> be great for ourselves if we do get the penalties and beat them. I want it done and dusted in 90, JC. I want it done and dusted in 90. I want the players to be able to bugger off and get some rest until we see Saturday when we play either Ukraine or Sweden. And then after that, we go on and we face the winners of Denmark, Czech Republic. And after that, probably France or Italy in the final. Um, capable. Capable of doing it. If that's our route, we're more than capable of winning this tournament. Um, we just need to turn it out. 
turn it on, turn it up, turn, turn it on and turn up, get the job done and then move on. Over to you, Mosey, your thought? I don't think I don't think them stats come into consideration. Uh, there's four thousand Germans tomorrow, apparently, in the in the in, uh, are travelling for the game. Um, but I don't know how this works. So, is there going to be like French forty thousand or... in the stadium tomorrow, isn't it? Yeah, but I don't know how that works. Whether you're going to have some French and because they probably thought they'll finish in third, for example. You, you had to buy the ticket so far in advance. Um, could mm. there be you? You really don't know how many Eng- English fans are going to be there. Do you know what I mean? So uh, yeah. the, I, I'm not saying that it doesn't make a difference, but the crowd, the crowd will need to be up for it. And I think the substitutions are key tomorrow. If he doesn't get them substitutions right, it can really bite us. Yeah, depending on how the game's going. And we we can use five of them. This is the thing. I mean, he's not really utilised his bench you know, to, yeah. to the sort of like the fullest effect. And all right, we've still got into the last 16. So I suppose you can't complain. We, and, and another thing that I, I think possibly gives us reason to be positive is defensively. We've looked more solid three clean sheets out of three, whereas they haven't got one clean sheet and they've conceded five goals in their three matches. So again, I'm trying to find reasons to be positive rather than sort of like dwelling and going, Harry Kane isn't performing, which he isn't. Let's let's not muck about. But I'm I'm trying to find little things that that go and say, you know, actually, this is you know this is a reason that we can be positive. This is something that we can point to and go, actually, this is a reason to be optimistic. Okay, so I'll ask both of you this. So I've got. Where do you reckon the game's won and lost tomorrow? Central midfield. The engine room. I, th- I think that's where it's won and lost. I think. I think to be honest with you, that's where most games are, are won and lost. Okay. Duke. Uh, yeah, I say uh, Harry Kane turns up with his shooting boots and, and shows the class. I think we've got um, we've got more about us. Um, like I said earlier, having a say the right wing back, uh, not having sorry, Kimmich is the right wing back. Um, Rudiger, Hummels and uh, Ginter are there to be got at by the pace that we have going forward. Um, yeah. Gundogan, Gundogan won't sit. He'll, he'll bomb on. Um, so it will leave them very vulnerable in and behind. So for me, um, you know, balls, balls to the balls to the, to the whippets out on the wings, you know, um, be it Sterling, be it Sancho, Saka, you know, um, uh, whoever you're going to put out there. Um, for me, I think Kane turns up with a bit of support, um, getting balls into that box. Hubbles is strong in the air, but again, he's weak on the floor. So if you can isolate him against someone with a bit of pace, Kane, Kane can move, Kane, Kane's rapid at times. So again, I think um, Kane, Kane's where it is. If we can, if we can supply the guy and we can deliver for him, he'll deliver for us and, and, and that'll be job done. For, 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 me, for me, it's set pieces tomorrow. Uh, I think I think that's okay. where the game's won and lost. Um, I, I'm going to put my hands up. Are we up, talking uh, in terms of of defending them as well as as yeah, you know, as well as attacking them, as well as as yeah. well as that. Um, I think that the, the the game will turn different is if if Werner comes into the play or Sane. We need to be in control of that game before they come on the pitch. Either they're chasing the game. Or, or, or they they got they're going for it. I think if Sane and Werner come on, I don't think we'll be able to deal with their pace. But with regards to defending, I'm going to put my hands up. I think um, I think Pickford's done well. Obviously, he's got three clean sheets. He's commanded his box very well. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very disappointed that he doesn't catch the ball. But what goalkeepers do? But whenever he's had to, he's got the ball away. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it give him. Given for that, but yeah, for me, set pieces tomorrow. Yeah, it does seem to be a modern phenomenon that goalkeepers in the main don't seem to catch the ball. The amount of times I've seen a ball that is perfectly catchable, in my view, 
and it's punched away, it's palmed away, and especially when it's it's almost patted down towards the opposition front line, you're like, what are you doing? Seriously? But modern yeah. goalkeepers, I'm afraid. Anyway, next slide, please. I think there's one more, isn't there, of the of the snippets. So England have never won a European Championship knockout match in 90 minutes. Now that, uh, not so good. Drawing four, losing two. Four games have gone to penalties with England only progressing once by this method. And that was the game that I mentioned earlier where we beat Spain at Wembley at Euro 96. Duke, your thoughts? Um, again, I said, uh, um, you, you, can, you can relate these stats. I, I you need to really. You look at, um, you look at, you know, West Ham, West Ham's form in the FA Cup, for instance, basically, you know, how many times have we lost against the Minnows, yet we've turned up against the big boys, you know, it's, it, for me, it's going to have very little bearing on the game itself, um, <laughs> what you could be looking at is, you know, that stat means nothing if we rock up and win tomorrow, that stat goes out the window, we rock up and lose, and people are going to dwell on it. And it's going to be that stat when we sign up against another team in, in three years' time on the Euros, you know. So, um, it, for me, it don't make a reading that has very little bearing on the players that are going to be there and out there tomorrow, you know. Um, those players that are going out there tomorrow weren't necessarily playing in, in, the, in the games that we haven't won or the penalty shoot at. So, you know, very, very little bearing. But, yeah, it don't make a good reading, mate. Marzi? I think the Columbia penalty win comes in handy because that's probably our last comp- like one in competition. You can't really count the Nations League, really. I know we won on penalties against, I can't remember who it was. Um, yeah, it's still a tournament. I mean, whether you yeah, call yeah. it a major... It's obviously not a tournament on the level of the, yeah. the European Championships or the World yeah, Cup, but it is Cup. a tournament that has been... I don't think England play in that. No, but it's on the level of, isn't it? it? It's not a. Basically, it's just a glorified bunch of friendlies, Casey, to be. To, to be um, no, no, no. I, 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 don't think I don't think they're friendlies. I, no, I don't think they're friendlies. I think, you know, if, if you, know, if you look at the, the teams that, that have won it in the last two um, goes of it, then I, then I think that, you know, the, the, the teams want to win it fundamentally. I don't know a sort of like a team that wouldn't want to rock up to a tournament. All right, like I say, it's not on the level of you know. Yeah, every match you play, be a friendly bit. Of course you do. Euro, you know. Yeah, put it put it this way: um, the Euro, the Nations League was brought in to to get rid of the meaningless friendlies, and I think that they that you know. Yes, it, like I say, it's not a European Championships, it's not a World Cup, but it's better than playing sort of like three, four, five, six, however many friendlies that fundamentally mean nothing. At least, the, at least this is something that's got something on it. But anyway, we digress. We digress. Milesy. Yeah, uh, uh, I think I th- if it goes to penalties, I think we will beat them. I just think the home advantage, um, but. I can't see it going that far, gents. I think it's going to be over in 90 minutes. Do think wanna... we're coming on the right side of it, though? No. I don't. Ooh, Milesy, I-, I wanted a bit more confidence, mate. Give me a reason to be cheerful. Uh, if Declan Rice don't play, we lose tomorrow. Oh, mate. Oh, don't say that. Don't no, say, either like, one, no. I don't want to happen. I want, I, I, you know, but is, is, does he have a point, Duke? Yeah, he does. Um, I, I, I said it numerous times during, you know, the previous season, Casey. Declan Rice, Declan Rice is key, not just for for us, but for Ireland. I mean, England. Um, um, he is he's key in that position for me. Um, as as we've all as we've all stated quite frankly throughout the season, he he is the best player in his position that we have at international level for this country. Okay, and he is on par 
with any of the greats that are still playing in that position as well. As we've said, he goes any other club in the world in that position and bar probably six or seven improves them and the other six or seven he doesn't make them any worse. He compliments them, if anything. He walks in, for me, he walks into the Barcelona side, even at this age now, and he compliments that Barcelona side. Doesn't make them any worse. Real Madrid, same thing. Man U makes them better. Man City compliments what they've got. Liverpool, he's better than Jordan Henderson, therefore he improves that Liverpool side. Um, Man U, you know, I, I could go by Munich. He walks in, he plays alongside someone like Jimmy. He compliments them. He doesn't make them any worse. So. He is, for me, one of the best players in his position in the world. And you are running, like uh, uh, Miles, you just said, you don't play him, you don't play your best players, you don't win games. Um, so, fundamentally, he starts tomorrow. Ahead, he, he, for me, uh, he's, he, hmm, first or second name on that team sheet, either you know, just in front of Harry Kane or just behind him. Um, but it, it's quite simple, really. He is uh, he's one of the best players in his position in the world, in that position. Um, you start it. If you want to win that game, you start it. It's quite straightforward. I agree with everything you yeah. just said there, no, mate. Fair enough. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think that Declan Rice, for me, has to be in the starting eleven. Maybe I'm a biased West Ham fan, but I just think... That Gacy, Rice. Yeah. And, and I'm talking bias. It's not. It, listen, we can all say that, you know, people watching the video will say, oh, look at them West Ham fans being biased. It's not bias. It's straightforward fact. Not being funny. Well, clubs are looking at him for a reason because he replaces anyone in their squad. Anyone in that top five above us in the Premier League this season, he walks into their team games and replaces what they've got. City are looking at him to replace Fernandinho. You know, United are looking at him because they haven't got anyone that sits and holds in his quality. City, you know, Liverpool, he replaces Henderson hands down, if you want my opinion. You know, so, and as I've said, Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Real Madrid, PSG, he goes to these places, Lazio, Roma, AC, Inter, he goes to these places and he makes these teams better or compliments them. So, it, 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 for me, it's not about bias. Um, yes, we're West Ham fans. No, but, and, and but I, think what's in, I think what's important, though, Duke, is that the Declan Rice that's allowed to take to the pitch tomorrow is the Declan Rice that we've seen play for West Ham this season and not the Declan Rice that quite clearly has been given orders by Gareth Southgate. You sit in front about 10, 15 yards or so in front of the back four, you break the play up and you give the ball to the midfielders and the attackers that lie ahead of you. And that is your job done. Because the Declan Rice that we've seen so far at the European Championships is 180 degrees of removed from the Declan Rice that we've seen in a Claret and Blue shirt. And I, I don't believe that he's doing that off his own back. He's doing that because he's under orders. Yeah, you're right. And then, as I said earlier, you've got a manager, on the, or you said earlier, you've got a manager on the pitch in your captain. Boss, that ain't working. You've got, you've got to let Declan Rice play. Let Declan Rice play. He, 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 listen, to get the most out of him, he's got to be with the player he was at West Ham this season. You've got to let him play like the player he was at West Ham this season. Let him drive forward with a ball. Let him hold on to that ball because he's comfortable. He's under no pressure to lose that ball because he's confident in his ability on that ball. Um, you know, Bobby Moore was exactly the same. Bobby Moore didn't rush a pass. Declan Rice doesn't rush a pass because he's comfortable having the ball in his feet. He's confident in his ability to be able to pick a pass and uh, to break or, or to set the next wave of attack up. He's confident in his, in his ability to, uh, you know, read the game and step in. I'm not saying that Declan Rice is, you know, the probably more reincarnate. But you, what, you want to know something? He's a bloody good player and he has all the abilities that Bobby Moore had. He's just young. You give him another 10 years and watch this boy take off. And I promise you now, he's, if he stays at West Ham another 10 seasons, he'll be the one we're talking about in 20 years' time in the same breath now that you and I talk about Bobby Moore. 
high praise. High praise. I'd I, I, I like really to sort of get any higher than that. So, Malsey, next slide, please, because I think the next one is our head-to-head -head record, isn't it? Can you uh, zoom in on that? Call make call it a bit screen, bigger. There we go. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is our historical record against the Germans. It's actually not as bad as a lot of people might think it is. 13 games we've won, 15 games they've won, four draws. So historically, surprisingly enough, there's actually not that much between the two teams, is there? Can I ask, can I just quickly ask, are those, are those four draws, are, are they the, the penalty shootout after 90 minutes? Or two of them they... will be, yes. Yes, yeah. two of them will be, because but officially they count as draws. Mm. So 17, so really it's 17. Um, I think the five games today, that's got to be 14, 14 for, for England. Um because I remember watching Escape to Victory and I think we won that. Yeah, I think Bobby you've... Moore scored in that. I think Sylvester Stallone had a blinder in goal. <laughs> um, so if I remember that rightly, I, I, think, I do think that's... That doesn't count. Stop clutching at straws. <laughs> it's a great goal by Bobby Moore in the back. But the thing is, is this... Yeah, but there's, there's, a, there's obviously a perception that... that Historically, the Germans have got the better of, of, of us consistently. But you look at that and it's like, actually, that that doesn't ring true. Um, next slide, yeah. please. Okay. That is our record against the Germans in the 21st century. And it's our last 10 matches. Um, what's that? One, two, three, four wins, one draw and one, two, three, four, five defeats. So, again, not much in it. I mean, yes, we're the wrong side of it, but it's, it's not massively in their favour. Reasons to be optimistic. I remember that 3-2 two, two win. I remember that game. That was a that very was good game. It was in Berlin, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a very good game. Um, Jamie Vardy got a back heel, didn't he? I'm, I'm not imagining that, did I? He, that was the, yeah. That's the match, isn't it? Yeah, Kane scored some weldy, like he'd done a unique turn. And was it, who got the winner? Eric Dyer, I think, wasn't it? Was it Eric Dyer? Dyer, Dyer Header. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dyer Header. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Um, I think all them all them go out the window gates, to be honest. That's, it's, what is that, four, oh, yeah. years since we, four years since we last played them? Um, oh, yeah, in the squad. yeah, it's like you say, Margie, out the window. Yeah, I don't know. The, I, the only thing is, though, that at least the players aren't going to look at the record and it's not defeat, 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 defeat. And they're going to, you know, and all right, it's a different set of players, different set of circumstances and all the rest of it. But sometimes players, even sort of like if it's subconsciously, can look at a record and go, oh, shit, here we go again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So no, at least they haven't got that as a sort of an obstacle as, a, as something that they're going to look at and go, Christ, our record against them isn't good. You know, it's like, actually, we've got a little bit of parity. Okay. Got a question for you. So, for so in all of the competitions where we've played in them, so for, uh, we'll do it from the 2000, and let's do it for, from them game. So the victory is what we've played. If you could bring one player from any of them ones, what we've won, who would you bring into for tomorrow's squad? If you could, you, in you that cut out for me there. Say that again. So let's just do the ones what we've lost. So obviously the two thousand game where we where where we lost. Mm -hmm. That was the uh, last so game of the old Wembley, wasn't it? Did your man? So the games what we've lost. If you can remember, if you could bring back one player mm -hmm. from that t who, who was in that team in tomorrow's squad and why, who would you pick? As, from as the October seventh. Seven... Yeah, we'll just from... go through some of them. Yeah. Or you can go over victory. Mm. If you just select a couple of games that you thought it was a standout, who you'd have tomorrow well, in the squad. I'll tell you who. I'll tell you who. I I would I would go Alan Shearer. Hmm. I'd go Alan Shearer. I like Luke's comment. Rio, Rio, or Michael Owen. 
Um, and, and Rio, because just you know, the way he was in that back line, um, we've, we've, not had, we've, not had a, we've not had a defender like him, you know, since that whole Sol Campbell, you know, him and Sol Campbell at the back. Um, name, name me a, 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 a duo there. You know, John Terry at the back, but who did he really play alongside that, that, that had that kind of understanding that, <laughs> Pardon me, the Rio and so Sol Campbell had, you know, France, World Cup in France, etc. So, um, you yeah, know, it, it'd be difficult. It'd be, it'd be difficult, but like Luke says, yeah, they are. We need, we've got those, you know. Owen, Owen for me was absolutely dynamic in that, that 5 1 win. Um, he was, you know, he got the act trick, but it wasn't just the act trick he got, it was his all round play in that game was was, was amazing. Um, and, and, yeah, Rio as a defender, because. As I've, as I've already said, um, watching, if we do get to the final, that's wood. Um, and um, we more than likely come up against a very good France side. I'd, I'd probably lay money on it that they'll get there. Um, actually, they're playing now, I've got the stories. Um, but killing Mbappe running at pace at Harry Maguire, and Harry Maguire trying to actually find his feet as he runs backwards, gets, the, gets after me. Um, and um, I, I hope to think that Gareth Southgate has enough um, tactical know-how and, and knowledge to realise that um, if we're going to do that, I'd actually use all of the right backs that he's got with us as, uh, as centre-backs in that game um, to give us the pace to be able to combat Killian and Pape. He's just absolutely, I mean, honestly, the geezer scares me. Um, and, and I'd like to think that that would be the way to go. We're coming towards the end of the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. So all the you that are in the live chat, give us your score predictions now. Um, we'll go with uh, you, Mr. Miles. How's this How's this game going to play out? What's What's your score predictions? If he plays the team what I want to play, <laughs> I, I see us winning comfortably 2-1 two, two, or 3-1. Um, but I think he's going to be negative, and I think we're going to lose one now. If he plays, with, if he if he goes negative, is it if is it goes, going to extra he, time, or do you think it's going no. in ninety minutes? No, and I reckon it will be Mister Havertz will will get the goal. Mm, yeah, that's if he plays yeah, defensive. If he, if he if he if he if he goes like really defensive and Rice doesn't play, but if he if yeah. If you see Foden and Grealish, etc., and Rice protecting them, I think we'll win. But I, I, I honestly can see us being too negative and, ger- ger- and Germany will nick a goal. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm being honest. Luke, well, I, I hope you're wrong, but you know, you got you, you know, I'd rather you be honest. So, uh, and Switzerland have just gone one nil up. <laughs> How do you like those onions? I love those onions. How do you like onions. those onions? I've just I'll seen it out of the corner of my eye. I'll, I'll have them onions caramelised with some garlic. Yeah. Forget, see, yeah. Paul Pogba looks a little bit. Paul Pogba, I think, I think it's Safirovic who scored, if I look at things. Um, I'm just watching it now. Uh, it goes out to the left, the Switzerland left. Players plays a ball into the box, header for Sefirovic, um across the goalkeeper into the bottom corner. Lorry's had Good no header. chance. One nil, Switzerland. Yeah, yes. Lorry's weren't getting that. That was that. And in fact, that's to me that's a header that's a bit reminiscent of the guy of, that I just mentioned, Alan Shearer. So there you go, Duke. Give me your score prediction. Uh, well, I, I think I've been quite. I mean, I've, I've said it a few times during this, and I've, I've banged on about it actually whilst working. Um, I, I've got to set the win two one games, and I've, I've also done that in the um, in the uh, in the Hammers chat. Um, you know, Euro predictor. I've got to set the win two one, um, and I stand by that. I think we've got we've got enough about us going forward to outscore this German side. Um, and like, as I say, they look for dog okay, my voice as well. Um, I, I think they've got enough about us going forward that Germany defensively will look shoddy and ropey against this. They look shoddy and ropey against the Hungarian side, but no disrespect to the Hungarians don't have probably half of the attacking prowess that our, 
our Premier League and, and Bundesliga players had. Do you see what I mean? So um, I'd, I'd like to think we're going to get in and get up. And, and I think that, uh, yeah, the 2 1 win, 2 1 in England, I think Harry Kane will break his cup with both. Fair enough. I'm I'm also going I'm also going a two one win. I apologise for my dog uh, barking. Um, I'm going two one. I think. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Um, I'm going a two one win. I think it actually might go to extra time. I think it might be be a one all draw after ninety minutes. I think we go into extra time, and I think that that we somehow managed to fashion a winner. To prevent it to go into penalties, which, to be honest, I know, as I say, we've got the Columbia penalty shootout win. We've got the one in the in the Nations League. So we've kind of got a little bit of confidence. But really, that wasn't against Germany. And Germany in penalty shootouts very, very rarely come out on the wrong side of it. So I'm hoping that it doesn't go to penalties because that's when I might be a little bit more my enthusiasm my trying to find little nuggets to be confident about to be positive about which i've been trying to do all the way along trying to find little reasons you know we haven't conceded a goal they've conceded five in three games um if, if it goes to penalties then I, I might be a little bit more concerned but i'm going to go one all after 90 minutes two one in extra time and we go through and play who's scoring, the winner who's scoring of sweden to? against ukraine um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna back Harry Kane to score, and okay. I and I think Raheem Sterling's gonna carry on his scoring. So I think it'll be those two that get the goals. You heard it here first. Okay. There you go. Okay. Before we wrap it up, those of you that are still watching and those of you that watch subsequently. You know what's coming. So this is in the description below the stream on both YouTube and Facebook. Do us a favor. Just copy and paste this onto your social media platforms. Uh, this little girl needs our help more than ever. Um, you know, with every day that goes past, you know, she needs more and more help all the way. So just put it onto your social media platforms and, you know, if, if you can put anything in the pot, then so much. That's that's fantastic. Um, but just please put it on your social media platforms. Keep the momentum going. Um, you know, uh, like I say, the girl needs our help. Little Isla, she's battling neuroblastoma. She needs to get the treatment paid for. And, yeah, you, you know the drill. So, Mosey, there's something you want to uh, mention as well on, on this particular front. Yeah, 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 no worries. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't know if um, I don't think have I shared it in the full Tremine Gates. I don't think I did, did I? I'll share that in there, or, or is it been shared? I know I, I know I saw it, and I, I shared it on my personal what's name. I probably yeah. should put it on the, the full um, Facebook as well. Yeah, yeah, no worries. We'll put it in there. Um, but yeah, um, so for um, for Isla. Um, uh, Nicola, uh, Isla's mum's uh, doing a jumble sale. Um, it's 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 in Barkins, Lash Daglam. It's a jumble sale. We'll put the address on and share it. We'll probably do it on the next video. Actually, we'll probably put the full address so yeah. in the description or something. Can people put it in? But it's just uh, another way of raising money for Isla. Um, so they're donating toys and stuff like that. But I believe a few people are also um, are sending Nicola some donations as well. Uh, a few. West Ham memorabilia I've seen over Facebook today, which are going to be sent as well. So as soon as we get closer to the time, but it's taking place on the, the 1st of August between 11 uh, and 3 is the scheduled time, but the hall's booked out all day. So depending how many people are there and how much stuff there, it may go on a little bit longer. Uh, you can also, uh, if if you uh, want to, you, the, the bar will be open all day as well. So you, if you want to get a, get a drink, you're more than welcome to. That's alcoholic and non-alcoholic. And if you want to come, even come and say hello to me, I will be there all day in in support. And um, like you said, we'll try and um, raise as much money as we can. And yeah, like I said, if you can't donate, just keep on sharing. Even share the jumble sale. Even share uh, the link to the just giving because, like you said. Um, she needs us more than ever. I know every every day is crucial, and hopefully we can make a difference. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and uh, guys, like I say, as Milesy says, put it on your social media platforms, the um, the little blurb, and like I say, it's in the description below, Facebook and YouTube, so it, you can copy and paste it, put it onto your social media platforms with a little note as to what it's about, as I say, little girl that needs our help, um, life-saving treatment, you know the drill. Um, I'm going to bring it to a conclusion there, guys. Um, for those of you watching, if you haven't already done so, please make sure you like the put like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel. Thank you very much indeed for your company, Mr. Miles. Your pleasure, mate. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be we'll be celebrating a win when we do the review show. And th thanks for pressing the buttons, by the way, mate. You dug me out of a little bit of a hole. That's all right. I mean, I mean, I'm all, I always like helping you two out. It's, it's not a problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> much appreciated, and, and thank you very much to to you, Duke. Thanks for thanks for popping on. No, listen. I, as, as I said to you the other day, JC, uh, and, and my missus actually pointed out this morning when I mentioned that you'd uh, you'd set up the stream for tonight. Um, I said I want to get on just the simple fact that. Um, I've been absent from from a few streams, and, and I've been, to be honest, been quite absent from the whole Forge from Iron setup in you know Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, just because obviously being back at work is taking up a significant portion of my time. Um, I am, however, uh, trying to rejig uh, some bits and pieces around with a pub um, to work out my days off where I can actually try and um, you know commit two solid full days to to getting stuff done for, for, for the channel and, and for Twitter and, and everything else. So it's something I'm trying to do and trying to get back into. I mean, I was always very aware that once we uh, once we went back to the pub and the pub's opened, it was going to be very difficult for me to be able to, you know, contribute half as much as what I had been, you know, prior to reopening. So with a bit of luck, a bit of uh, a bit of rejigging, um, yours won't be the, uh, your, your, you two and won't be the ugly faces that they see all the time. It'll be a, uh, my uh, my handsome uh, my handsome mug up on the screen and look. So I'll 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 bring in some handsomeness alongside Jazz uh, when we do the streams. Not just Jazz, but I've got you know Newton, uh, bulldog chewing wasps kind of thing. He'll have someone you know very Beckham esque sitting next to him. You know, bringing the handsomeness right. rating back up. And and um, we may be, but we'll, we'll let you know. We'll have a chat off air. Hammer time may be being moved, but we'll keep you all updated via social media. It may be moving to a Wednesday, but we'll confirm and keep you all updated on all social media platforms. Go on, boy. And of course, if there's any of you guys that are out there watching this, either live or delayed, and, and you want to come on the season review, just send us a DM. You've got the ticker at the bottom. You can just send us a DM at Forge Talk. Uh, if any of you want to come on any, if there's any season that particularly appeals, I think on Thursday we're doing 99, 2000. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. 99, 2000. Yeah. 99 red balloons. Wow. Yeah. We are really um, wondering. Um, I love it. So if there's anybody um, that, that sort of like oh, no, season Peach. upcoming that means something to you. Peach wanted to do this one. 99, 2000. 992,000. Yeah. I thought that was Mr. Budden. I thought it was Peach. I'll have to, I'll have to yeah. find out. Actually, I've, got to talk, now. I've got to talk to Russ. So, yeah. Because I know he wanted to do it because it was the Intertoto Cup win. So, uh, We'll speak to him then. We'll speak. We'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway. guys, thanks for joining us. All you guys in the live chat, thanks for getting involved. Um, one thing left to say, I believe, Mr. Miles, over to you. We are fucking massive. And we'll go with, come on, you Irons, come, come on, you on Irons. England. Come on, you Irons. Come on, you, come on, you free Lions. <laughs> Stay safe, guys. Stay safe.